Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, Alleluia. The fire of Pentecost illumines our hearts and pushes back the darkness. The wind of Pentecost unlocks and opens the doors to new life. The tongues of Pentecost proclaim the great deeds of God and call us to live in a state of forgiveness, to remember and reclaim our original beauty, to turn our gaze back to God, to reshape and form ourselves in his likeness. Blessed and praised be God. Today, O God, you bring to fulfillment the Paschal mystery of Jesus, your Son. Pour forth your Holy Spirit on the Church, that it may be a living Pentecost throughout history and to the very ends of the earth. Gather all nations and peoples as one to believe, to hope, and to love and to serve. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being shut where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Forgiveness is probably not the first thing that comes to mind when we think about today's feast. Mention Pentecost, and most recall the story in the Acts of Apostles. The upper room, the rush of violent wind, divided tongues as of fire, appearing and resting on each disciple. We picture people speaking, hearing, and understanding strange new languages. Christopher, reading from his home, gives us a glimpse into how St. John understood the happenings on the 50th day following the Lord's resurrection. For John, Pentecost is more about what is happening within us than what is happening around us. The sign of Pentecost for John is forgiveness that opens locked doors, recreates life, and sends us out to be like Jesus. In the Old Testament, Pentecost was a feast 50 days after Passover, celebrating the giving of the law to Moses on Mount Sinai. According to tradition, a mighty wind turned to fire, and a voice proclaimed the law. Luke, in his book of the Acts, builds on this well-known feast, and using its familiar theme, he too has mighty tongues of fire coming upon the disciples. This coming of the Holy Spirit, who is Lord, the giver of life, is not another law-giving, but a life-giving that leads to a new way of living the divine law, not via words carved in stone, but by lives lived, not a life of rules, but a rule of life, in which forgiveness and reconciliation play a huge part. What happened on that day is why we are here today as the Church, the body of Christ Catholic. The Church is not a building, but a people, the likes of you and me. Like the Israelites before us, we are a community called by God and sustained by him. And like them, we have been given the law, a new law, which for us is summed up in the great commandment of Jesus to love God and our neighbor as ourselves. It is faith inspired by God that gives us the confidence to be this church, making the journey, living the life to which holy baptism has called us, worshiping, loving, giving of ourselves, our time, our talents, and our money, caring, forgiving, and bearing witness. In these days of pandemic, in times of fear and uncertainty regarding the future, 
We can do no better than to pray each day, enclosed as we are in our own homes, in our upper rooms, the ancient prayer of the Church, Veni Creato Spiritus, and solemnly invoke the Holy Spirit to inspire us, comfort us, gift us, and aid us in our life of faith, confirming us to be the body of Christ, the Church. The Holy Spirit pushes us beyond ourselves, our abilities, our expectations, when he sets us on fire. Others may think we are drunk, but we will know that we are inebriated with the life of the risen Jesus. Alleluia. Brothers and sisters, rejoicing in the grace and life of the Holy Spirit who intercedes for us, let us pray for the Holy Church. That we may welcome and gather peoples of every race, language and way of life into the life and witness of the Church, each growing in image and likeness of the risen Lord. Lord, hear us. That God's Spirit may bestow upon all peoples, young and old alike, dreams of peace and visions of justice. Lord, hear us. That the holy and life-giving Spirit may breathe new life and hope into all who have been isolated, for those exhausted serving the needs of many, for all who work in the NHS and in our care homes. Lord, hear us. For those in sickness and situations of bereavement, all we have been asked to pray for that they may know the healing grace of the Holy Spirit. Lord hear us. For all those preparing for baptism and marriage may God enlighten their hearts and minds. Lord hear us. For those departed this life believing in Christ's resurrection may they be raised by the grace of God's Spirit to the joy of eternal life. Lord hear us. In Christ we have received the spirit of adoption as sons and daughters of God. We therefore pray.
you revealed yourself on the holy mountain in fire and on Pentecost in the flame of the Holy Spirit. Let your mighty fire burn within us and let your breath of life rekindle that life in us more and more each day. May God, the Father of glory, who raised our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead through the grace of the holy and life-giving Spirit, fill us with the radiance and peace of his risen life. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.